Hi! In this video, I'll be going through another class of equation. And in this equation, it actually falls under the separable equations, but there's some unique properties that we like to study from these equations that we can derive. So, this class of equation is known as autonomous equation, and they are of the form dy dx equals to a function purely in terms of y. So there's no x term, t terms here. Or you can think of the t terms as 1. So it's multiplied by 1. So it's variable separable. Because if the variable separable, if you recall, is dy dx equals to fy times gt. And then the way to solve it is you divide this thing over and integrate it. So this is a special case of a variable separable equation. And for this equation, because it is purely in terms of y, you don't really need to care how t is to understand how the, how the gradient, the rate of change of y, because dy dt also can be interpreted as the rate of change, how the rate of change of y changes. And this gives us some information about the differential equation without solving it. For example, it tells us the stability and instability of the solutions, which we will dive deeper into. So, the main purpose is to learn how geometric methods can now be used to obtain qualitative information directly from the differential equation without solving it. And here's the important note, that for autonomous equations, the slope of its directional field is independent of t. And so along this y, all the slopes here are equal. Now, one form of autonomous equation is known as exponential growth or the exponential model for a population. So these are really used to model populations. So the simple hypothesis is that just the rate of change of the population is proportional to the population size. So why? So it's actually dy dt equals to rt. And if you solve it, the reason why it's called exponential is just because in the end you'll get it to be an exponential function. And so this means that if the population rate of change is proportional to the size of the population, then it will grow exponentially as seen over here. However, it is clear that this is not possible in real reality because there's limitations in resources around you that will prevent you from growing to infinity. So in what that happen is that models need to be refined to model real life better. And this leads us to the next equation known as logistic growth of our population. So for this case, now we say that the rate of change is equal to a function of y multiplied by y. So, what we want is we want to choose a function of y that is approximately a constant when y is small. So that it becomes like this exponential. Then, hy decreases as y grows larger as well. Because maybe the resources are finite, so you get less resource to sustain the population and what more if the population becomes too large then it starts decreasing because they just people start dying off faster and using what we want the simplest function will be just this negative linear function so it's like some constant r minus away a y these equations are now known as the ver equation or the logistic equation and it is 
it is convenient to now consider the logistic equation in this form instead. As you just pull out the R, so it's A over R. So instead, you just write K. Where R is the intrinsic growth rate. So in the app, so without any limiting factors, R is how much you grow with. Because you can see it's over here. And the interpretation on K, we'll talk about it later. So what we want to do now is we want to see solutions to this type of different logistic equation for which the rate of change is zero so it's a constant solution so it must satisfy that the rate of change equals to zero so and this point where we get is at y equals to zero and y equals to k and these are known as equilibrium solutions because there's no change in the value of y as t increases So these roots, these zeros are also known as the critical points. So what do I mean by this is that to better understand how these solutions behave, we just plot a graph and see it. So the fun this is the graph of the differential form. So it's like like this, and then y. This is the y axis because it's only in terms of y. So you just plot the graph and see, and you actually see that you're able to now draw what is known as a phase line, which is just the behavior of the graph. So you see, everything here is positive rate of change because the f y is positive. So the means it increasing, so it all goes this way, and you actually see this part. Is negative, so it's actually decreasing, so it goes this way. So that's how we be study the behavior of the fun the differential equation without actually using t, because it's only in terms of y. So you just first plot this phase line, so you understand how the population is growing towards, and then you check the concavity to uh, to realize that. There are some points of inflection, and when does it concave up, and when does it concave down? So, let's just say you have the equilibrium point K here. Everything above, it concaves up. So you see, concave up is between 0 to K over 2, and Y larger than K. So everything above is concave up, and it's decreasing, so it's like that. It follows the like that, this type of curve. Then, everything above K over 2 is concave down and increasing so it's like that then for those below k over 2 it's also increasing but there's a change in concavity so it's concave up first then concave down so you can see how the solutions will roughly look and yeah so if you combine all the information you get this curve Another way of drawing it is you have the face line beside here and then you just uh, draw the arrows this way instead of drawing the two separate uh, or entire graph I mean So what we can see is that K becomes an upper bound but it never exceeded as the population starts growing and this is known this K we call it now the carrying capacity of the environment So, qualitatively, the stability of an equilibrium solution is given as follows. So, you have the first case, which is, mm, you got, the, the graph is increasing this way out and this way out. So, you just draw the face line and see. So, when you draw the graph, it actually diverts di divert away from, a. So this means we call it as an unstable equilibrium point. And for case 2 is what we have already seen. We increase towards the value A. So then they will be called a completely stable equilibrium point. And in case 3 is that you just increase in one direction. Or decrease in one direction so it's like 
one 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 side will increase all the way, one side will increase towards A, one side will decrease towards A, and one side will decrease towards all the way. And this is what is known as a semi stable equilibrium point. So these are the three types of stability of an equilibrium solution. And so while we talked about already finished about the qualitative part where we studied the behavior of the curves, let's try to solve the logistic equation. And actually solving it is not too hard. It is again, remember I said it's always a variable separable equation. So you just divide over and you solve it normally and you should get the following result over here. So you can just check through the workings if you want to solve it out yourself. But it shouldn't come too hard because the, the technique is what I've taught you before about how to solve separable equations. And with that solution, you can actually plot out the actual curve and actually see that it behaves like how we want it to behave using the baseline weight method. Therefore, we can conclude that K in this case is always an asymptotically stable solution and zero in this case, because zero is like this, but zero doesn't matter because population can't even be negative, will be an unstable equilibrium solution. So that's all for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope you have learned what is a exponential model and a logistic one. And how do you describe them qualitatively using the help of a phase line. I will catch you in the next video. Bye.